This is John Black, Super Chemist. The title of the book is Abduction of JBSC. Uh, the room was filled with marijuana smoke. John leaned back in his chair as he exhaled a giant cloud of smoke, uh, talking to himself, saying, Thank God I finished another video. Just have to do my catchphrase at the end and all done. Oh, yeah, baby. Opening up his camera and then leaning into the microphone, saying, you all have a great day, and always remember, science is great. Almost at the same time John said his last word, a thump came from the back of his head. Instantly, John fell to the floor, trying to lift his head, but everything went black. Two men standing over John look at each other, both men in ski mask. The one having a red ski mask and a tire iron in his hand. The other wearing a black ski mask, who starts yelling in a whispered voice. What the fuck was that? I told you the boss said not to hurt him. Christ, why do you think I gave you that chloroform? You better hope you didn't kill him. The red mask man replying, what fun would that be? Chuckling after his statement. The black mask man, now annoyed, orders his partner. Listen, he just said his, he just said he finished his video. I'm going to load up his shit. And while I'm doing that, I want you to post this, post his video. That way we have more time before anyone knows he's gone. Can you handle that? The red masked man reluctantly answers with a yes. And remember, the black masked man said, oh wait, the red masked man reluctantly answered with a yes. And remember, the black masked man said, don't hurt him again. Use the damn chloroform when he wakes up. Don't freaking hit him in the head again. I know, I know, he said. He is the great John Black stupid chemist, the red masked man sarcastically replied. A half hour later, the black masked man popped in to check on the red masked man. I am almost done. Take him down to the car and throw him in the trunk gently. And take him out the back way so no one can see you carrying him. You did post his video, right? The red masked man, happy to finally leave, replied in a chipper tone, almost laughing. Yep, I posted it real good. John, now handcuffed and unconscious, finally awakes only to find darkness. After a few minutes, he clears his head, only to realize that he is in a fucked up position. Too dark to see, he sits up, but only in a futile attempt, banging his head on the ceiling of the trunk door. His heart pounding out of his chest, confused as to why this is happening. His body being sloshed back and forth from each turn of the car. Muffled voices could be heard from the front of the car, leaning forward, pushing his ear against the wall of the trunk, struggling to hear, struggling to understand. Two voices could be heard, both English, but one speaking with a Spanish accent. The Spanish accent could finally be heard more clearly as John felt he was smashing his ear clear through the other side of the trunk wall into the back seat. I don't know. What is so great about this guy? He's just some idiot that we now own, said the man with the accent. The English-speaking man replied, That is what the boss wants, and so that is what we are going to do. You know he is a fan of John Black's, and for that matter, so am I. Hey, this dude is going to make us a lot of money, so that's all that matters. Well, to me, it makes, no, it makes more sense to hit him over the head a few times so he knows his place. Mark my word, this guy is going to try to escape the first chance he gets. And if he thinks if he thinks we're soft, said the man with the accent. The English-speaking man confidently saying, well, that's why we won't give him the chance. Once we get him underground, there's no escape. Running over a pothole jerks the car and John Black rolls to the back of the trunk. John's hands shaking uncontrollably. His breath slung and drained from almost asthmatic, talking to himself in a low whisper. Okay, John, freaking calm down. Okay, look, look, look. You're in a trunk of a car and handcuffed, being abducted. Take it one problem at a time. The handcuffs need to go, that's for sure. Why couldn't they cuff me in front? Trying to push the cuffs off, the handcuffs digging into his skin, scraping and cutting. After a few minutes, he could feel blood, making it more slippery and then more sticky. John whispered to himself again, Okay, John, you're going to have to break your freaking hand to get out of these. 
Are you ready for that? <laughs> Laughing for a minute, then resuming his conversation. Yeah, right, like that's going to happen. I need a plan B. <laughs> what the fuck is in the trunk? Is in this trunk. Rolling and flopping around, trying to grab it. At anything, John finally rolls over a tire iron. But that is about it. Uh, alone in a small universe consisting of John and a tire iron. Now on his stomach, John could feel his keys jabbing and poking his leg. Are you freaking serious? Who kidnaps someone and doesn't frisk them and take everything out of their pockets? What idiots, uh, John said. With John's hands, with John's hands cuffed behind his back, he twists his body and tries his hardest to get to his front pocket. After a few futile attempts, he grabs his pants to twist them around his body. With each pull, the pocket gets closer and closer until he can pull no more. The pants twisted as much as, much as they can so the pocket is as close as it's going to get. Struggling to get his finger in his front pocket, feeling the keys on the tip of his fingers, he says almost in a crying voice, Oh, freaking God! Oh, God, please let me get these! Stretching as much as he could. Take a break, John. Don't lose it now. John told himself, breathing long, deep breaths, and closing his eyes and trying to clear his mind. John calmed down. Just calmed down, he kept repeating. After regaining his composure, John once again tried for the keys in his front pocket, this time with success. Barely having his finger in the key loop, he pulled it slowly out until the keys fell on the floor of the trunk. Thank God, he said with some relief. Being a logical, no frills type guy, John's keychain was a cheap metal loop, almost paper clip thin, with four or five keys on it. John quickly unraveled the metal loop, just enough to jam in the handcuffs and wiggle around. Luckily for John, he had experience picking five tumbler locks back in his day, so the handcuff lock was no challenge. And within seconds, John was free. Free to move his hands, but still a prisoner in the car trunk. John starts to pat down the walls of the trunk, looking for the emergency release hatch. He knows if it is a newer car, there will be a release hatch inside the trunk. Within minutes, John finds the release. Okay, John. Remember, you are an old man, and there are two of them. Don't be an idiot. Just freaking run, man. Just wait for them to stop and run like hell. John trying to psych himself up for the run of his life, literally. John could feel the car slow, slowing down, his hand still shaking, clenching the tire iron with one hand and the other hand on the trunk release, waiting for the car to stop completely. Seconds feeling like eternity. John could not chance that the car was just slowing down for a second and then taking off to a freeway or something. Finally, the car came to a complete stop. Taking a deep breath, John pulled the trunk release and jumped out of the car as fast as he could, the car rocking immediately, alerting the kidnappers. Staring back at John, running as fast as he could in the, into the night darkness, the streets were empty, not even a person in sight. It looked like it was the downtown of a small suburban area. Lampposts lined the sidewalks, lighting up John's path. So he ducked down an alley in hopes of a successful escape. Watching in disbelief, the English-speaking man yells, Put your fucking mask on and let's go. Turn the fucking car around now. Tire squealed as he took off to get some speed to do a 180 turn. The smoke from burning tire rubber filled the streets. Only a half block later, John turns to see the headlights coming for him. John was an old man in very out of shape. Thin with pale white skin, his hair had barely any gray, making him appear younger than he was. His five o'clock shelf his five o'clock shadow helping by covering up any wrinkles that might have he might have. John turned towards the car, slightly hunched over. Slightly hunched over, trying to catch his breath. Looking like no challenge at all to his young fit abductors. The car stopped a couple feet in front of John, the headlights blinding him. Looking at the two masked men getting out of the car, John raised the tire up 
tire iron up like a bat, ready and willing to fight an unwinnable battle. The man in the red mask started to laugh as they approached. Are you serious, old man? said the red masked man. John lowered his weapon and then his head, a defeated old man with no recourse. As the red masked man grew near enough, he reached out to grab John's arm, laughing at the defeated old man. Grabbing John's arm and turning back, looking at his partner, the man with the red mask gloatingly said, See, he is just a little bump! With all his force, John swung that tire iron on the back of the red masked man's head. Instantly, the man dropped to the pavement. John looked as he, John looked at the other man, who did not seem surprised or upset. The man just shook his head back and forth in disbelief. John, waiting for the next guy, begins to advance towards the masked man, but is stopped dead in his tracks by the sight of the black masked man's gun. John, quicker than John could even believe, like an old western movie, after standing still like a statue for 30 seconds or so, the masked man finally spoke. Well, John, you have had your fun. I like you, John. I, I'm actually a fan of yours. But I don't have time for this shit. See, you're going to walk to the trunk and get in the fucking trunk. Take your tire iron in case we get a flat. And get in the trunk now. John did as he was told, and the man shut the trunk door. A minute later, John could hear screaming. It must have been the red-masked abductor that John had just knocked out because of the thick Hispanic accent. I'm going to kill that motherfucker. I'm going to rip his fucking skin off and wear it as a fucking coat. That piece of shit. Then smash! They were on the top of the trunk struggling. John could hear and feel the trunk buckle under from their weight as the trunk creaked. The English abductor, abductor screaming, The boss wants him unharmed in any way. The Spanish accent man blaring back, The boss, what the fuck, hombre? You always say the boss like he isn't your poppy, huh? You you are just his little lapdog. Now get the fuck off me, because that son of a bitch is going to pay. I won't let him live, but I got to at least break his leg or arm. The English-speaking man replying calmly back, Okay, hombre, I'm going to get up and let you do what you want. You want to break his leg? Then go ahead. But when we get back, you know my father will be pissed, and you will have done nothing but fucked shit up since you got here. If you really want to fuck up one more time, then be my guest, big man. The silence un was unbearable for John, clenching his tire iron, waiting for the trunk to pop open. His body caked with sweat, hands trembling, talking to himself once again. Well, John, this is it. This is how it ends. Some back alley in some guy's car trunk who you don't even know. Just when I was starting to accomplish something, help people, help society. Hell, help myself. The sound of the car started and revving up interrupted John's conversation with himself. The most relieving sound John could hear, well, other than sirens from 50 cops. The ride felt like days. The red masked men and made sure the ride was miserable for John. Suddenly the trunk popped open and John could see about four or five men all in ski mask. It was some kind of giant warehouse. They were parked in the middle of a football sized warehouse that was totally empty other than the men. The ceiling looked like it was at least a hundred feet high. All the men had guns in their waist belts and some had a couple of machine guns. There was no way to there was nowhere to run and definitely no way for John to fight his way out. John could not stop thinking, why do they have all these ski masks on? If they're gonna kill me, what do they care if I see their face? Finally John spoke up over all the men talking amongst themselves. Well what's up people? You obviously don't want me dead or old red mask over there would have done it days ago. Where am I? What do you want from me? That's the end of chapter one.